Hello, Harvest Time family and internet friends. The Lord bless you today. Thank God it's Friday, and thank God for every day. Uh, but I have a message for you uh, this uh, this day, and it's uh, it's called On the Road to Emmaus. So we're on a road, we're on a journey, and there were two men that had been discouraged. They hadn't got the encouragement that they needed. They were lacking knowledge. And many times my people perish for a lack of knowledge, just having that fullness. The other 11 had gotten the revelation, but these men uh, on the road uh, were lacking. But Jesus is there to help them in their lacking. But it does say in Luke uh, chapter 24, verse 13, Now behold, Two of them were traveling that same day to a village called Emmaus, which was seven miles from Jerusalem. And they talked together of all these things which had happened. So it was while they were conversing and reasoning that Jesus himself drew near and went with them. But their eyes were restrained so that they did not know it was him. And he said to them, What kind of conversation is this that you have with one another as you walk and are sad? Then one of whose name was Cleopas answered and said to him, Are you the only stranger in Jerusalem? And have you not known the things which happen there in these days? And he said to them, What things? And he said to him, The things concerning Jesus of Nazareth, who was a prophet, mighty in deed and word before God and all the people, and how the chief priests and the rulers delivered him to be condemned to death and crucified him. But we were hoping that it was he who was going to redeem Israel. Indeed, uh, besides all this, today is the third day since these things happened. Now, Jesus wants us to get perspective that Easter has occurred and that he has a plan to deliver mankind. He has a plan to, to answer our questions. He has wisdom for us, insight into our lives, and we have to, we have to seek him. And it's beautiful as they're walking down this road. It's a seven-mile journey. Uh, seven means uh, completion. Uh, you know, we have to journey. We have to journey. We have to uh, ask questions to God. We have to travail in prayer. Um, we need to understand when we feel disappointed. And it is a little disappointing now that um, we're not going to be able, it sounds like, to open up May the first Sunday and, and maybe uh, in the middle of May that this uh, corona uh, crisis will begin to lift and California businesses anyways will start to be able to reopen and uh, it is a bit discouraging but I had something that happened that was so powerful and encouraging to us all that I was talking with a neighbor that we've been praying for for almost nine years now and they uh, were of a Muslim excuse me of a Mormon a Mormon background, and uh, and in their background, we've had uh, Bible studies and, and debates and talks and prayers and the sweetest people, um, but they were convinced that they were going to stay in the Mormon Church. And during this coronavirus, as uh, as they've been more locked in, uh, apparently God has has been doing something supernatural in their lives, and she declared to me the other day, that they have left the Mormon church and that they will no longer attend there, that their questions were not being answered and that uh, the truth didn't line up. Uh, but they had a Christian background and they, they came back to Jesus and they're born again and they're of a, a Pentecostal persuasion now. Isn't that a miracle? A miracle of prayer, perseverance, journeying through life, conversations, praying for loved ones, praying for our neighbors, praying for the nation right now as we're reeling and, and not understanding, um, you know, why we're not opening up. Uh, of course, we're continuing to pray for the sick. It's really powerful that uh, Greg Amundis in our Assemblies of God, our, our missions director, is recovering very well. 
Uh, he was in very critical condition, and he's not uh, completely home yet, but he's on his way, and, he, and they expect a full recovery, so we'll continue to pray for that. But God uh, wants to answer our questions along the road, but we've got to be willing to listen. And, and Jesus, uh, you know, has patience. He's walking alongside them, and, uh, and, they're, and, they're, and, they've got, uh, and they're walking and they're sad. Now, if you go about or I go about being sad, we have to really question ourselves, what are we feeding on? What are we meditating on? Because the Word of God is life-giving. Uh, the Bible says this in Galatians 5, 16 through 18. It says, walk in the spirit and you will not fulfill the lusts of the flesh. For the flesh lusteth against the spirit and the spirit against the flesh. And these two are contrary one to the other. Walk in the spirit and you will not be under the law. So see, the law uh, holds us captive. But the Spirit of God rises above and applies truth to our lives that we can get out of the sad situation. We can get into the, the victory land through prayer, through meditation on the scriptures, and then just going about our business knowing that God has the ultimate plan for our success. So as they're journeying down, they thought, you know, wow, he was uh, supposed to rise again on the third day. And, and he did rise again on the third day. And, and sometimes we, we expect God to show up in our timing. And it's never going to be, it's never, ever going to be in our timing. It's going to be by persistence. By persistence, we inherit the promises. By persistence, uh, didn't Jesus fulfill 322 or, you know, uh, it's, it's over 300 distinct prophecies that he fulfilled in the Old Testament to become the Messiah who would die on that cross. And he told them that he would do that. Just like he tells us that there are some some more uh, trying times that through many tribulations will we enter into the kingdom of heaven. But God has a purpose in this. And, and as we're all pressing in, let's believe God for resurrection power. Uh, he's journeying with us. Um, these men begin to be comforted in their hearts and they begin to hear uh, as, as Jesus is the word. We've got the word with us. The word was made flesh. He's right there with them, but he's with us in those red letter words and reading through the gospels. And this is that 40 days now, 40 days where he appeared uh, to, to many on multiple occasions uh, to convince them that he was the one. He is the Lord of glory. He has an ultimate plan. And Satan has a plan, but his plan is limited to selfishness. God's plan is to save. God's plan is to heal. God's plan is to reveal. And, and we do have these uh, like social liberties that, that have been taken away. You got to wear a mask now to get into Home Depot. So I need uh, I need my my Home Depot supply, you know, to keep the church uh, up and running, repaired and 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 so you got to put on the mask. Uh but these social liberties will be lifted, but the 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 uh the conformity, the um the restriction that we feel um, is is causing us to have to uh, enlarge ourselves. We have to find more joy. We have to f shake off that sadness and that emptiness because you know these men needed Jesus' words of counsel and uh, and they were listening. And then it goes on in verse twenty five. Jesus says to them, "O foolish ones and slow of heart to believe in all that the prophets have spoken." Ought not the Christ to have suffered these things and to enter into his glory? I mean, Moses and the prophets wrote about it. And, and you and I do have to do some suffering in order for us to find the, our levels of joy, our, our, our heavenly perspective. I was so encouraged by our, our neighbors uh, coming to Christ and and uh, and it's just it's so beautiful when somebody comes into that revelation and these men are getting the revelation and uh, and they said, stay with us, stay with us, eat with us, come into our house on that. And when they arrived on, on the seventh mile and 
And Jesus, uh, he said, yes, I'll, I'll, I'll dine with you. And, and when we say yes to Jesus, will you come into my house? Will you, will you enlarge my perspective? Will you give me fresh boldness today, God? I want to walk in the spirit today, God. I, I don't want to fulfill the lusts of the flesh. I've got to be able to have a greater perspective. Jesus is walking with me. His word is in me. There's a purpose for this day, and I'm going to find it in Jesus' name. And so when they sat down, uh, then Jesus, it says in verse 32, and they said to one another, he knew, um, first of all, no, let me, let me just read verse um, 30. It says, and it came to pass as he sat down at the table with them, that he took bread and blessed it and broke it and gave it to them. Then their eyes were open and they knew him and he vanished from their sight. And they said to one another, did not our hearts burn within us? while he talked with us on the road, and while he opened the scriptures to us. So when Jesus sits down, and we sit down to listen, and, and to be attentive to his word, and to find the resurrection strength through the power of the Holy Spirit, then our perspective changes, and we're able uh, to let that, that burning of our hearts, that, that perspective that Jesus is coming back, Amen. That there's going to be a glorious appearing of our great God and Savior looking for that blessed hope. Titus 2.13. Uh, the King is coming and uh, deliverance is coming and, and we're going to get uh, you know uh, set free from some of these restrictions. But what are we going to do with this added time in perspective? Uh, let's, let's win people to Christ. And, and first off, let's, let's overcome our sadness and find joy in the day, and there's victory for all. And God bless you. Have a happy Friday.